Okay, so if you're anyone like me, I am kind of still new to the Ableton platform. I am a Studio One user, but I've been using Bitwig a lot and been using Ableton, right? I've been in Ableton Live, I have the sweet version. Now we're in 12, so I'm fascinated with some of the new features that they added to 12, which is kind of like borderline Studio One type stuff happening, like making... For instance, making someone like me that loves to work in a linear format, someone like me gravitate towards what Ableton is doing, if that makes any sense, with the features and node effects and modeler. It's all about modeler right now. And we've been trying to get Studio One to a point where we can do cool things like what we can do in Ableton, but i digress but we're going to switch over to my screen this is a song i came up with on the live stream and i cannot tell you guys that i am a pro at this i just thought it was cool to show you how i like to use ableton i just know enough to get the job done i've done full projects several times in here and I just keep amazing myself, I guess. And I, you know, discover new stuff. So this is one of my favorite areas right here, or I adopt this. This is one of the favorite things that I like to do when I'm working in Ableton because it supports it, obviously. Working in session view or clip view, I oftentimes refer to this section as clip view, but this is session view, and I'm able to come up with concepts real quick doing it this way. You know, this has sped, sped up my workflow tremendously. And when I'm ready to commit to the song layout, coming from this point of view, it allows me to be organic. I can feel the song when I'm when I'm doing it, you know what I mean? When I'm laying down the part instead of copying and pasting, you know what I mean? I want to be able to feel what the song is doing in real time. So, so here's my intro. So I'm thinking maybe I can I'm gonna duplicate this. And then I'm gonna take the the drums from from here I'm thinking, um, I can just duplicate the loop here. All right, take that out. So I made this essentially eight bars longer. I have the push too. It helps me do whatever I need to do in Ableton, which is dope. So I can also control the session by pressing stuff on the push.
That's definitely a verse. So let me relay this now. So the other cool thing about this is that, like, I like to label everything, which is essential to any workflow. Because if these tracks start to build up more and more and more, I don't know if the name of the instrument helps or if you're dealing with audio, especially like if you haven't like vocal recording or whatnot just gonna say audio one two three you know what i mean things like that like generic names i like to at least i like to, i like to label things i haven't did a great job here but i did do majority of it you know i labeled this drums this is my tops this is the name of the drum pack it came from which is all right but then there's a bass here that i created i call it the ella basith like that this one shame hey uh, i didn't realize that i was, had a okay i was doing some vocal stuff at the time and anyway let's erase that this one is contact this is obviously guitar so let me just label it now So I, f I feel if if I just do like that, it'll save me, you know, just fill up those spaces that way I, you know, I don't have to worry about the record button on whatever track I'm selected at the moment, just, you know, that might be a workflow, I don't know, they obviously have something on it. This is something on it. Okay, great. Sweet. Let's see what happens if I play this. Okay. And you know, I could just deactivate them too. You know, just for extra, like, visual effects, I guess. Look, these two, they're not even 
active. That's kind of cool. I don't know if there's somebody talking about that. So these drums right here. I don't think, yeah, this is a group, so it don't matter. All right. So like I was saying, if you color code everything, the the push will see that color. So now I have the option to go to the session view. I'm sorry, the arrange view and not have to worry about being here because sometimes I need, you know, if it's busy enough just to see what our label thing is and go straight to it. But after, after being in the track for so long, creating it, you know, you start to learn where everything is position wise. So it's not a big deal, but, um, I do tend to like to do things from the push because of the fact that I can be in the range view and not the session view. If that makes any sense, I could just use the push to, to act. I'm going to show you. I'll just show y'all. All right. So, for instance, this is the recording for the global deal. So, we're going to start from so what's happening now is the session view is recording and like I say live like real time I think this is wait a second let's do that over again because there was a bass in here oh Okay. So I guess from the push, I was not able to activate the first, the first line for some reason. Okay. I thought I was, I thought I was doing that. All right. Let's take this out. Let's do this again. One, two, three, four. Okay. And still, I can kind of toggle back to see what's going on you know, it's not a big deal so now for the second so far sweet sweet and so I'm going to hit this little button right here that activates the range window and so from here out we can just work in this view Right, and we can see everything.
So yeah, like to me, I feel like this is a faster workflow being able to again come up with your clips and whatnot and position things that gel well with each other for that particular part or that session line layout whatever and then you just keep building so that's all i do i just like as you guys saw me do early i just copy i mean duplicate or i could just copy move stuff around real easy like just in the clips yo like this is kind of the workflow and when i'm ready boom get it here you know what i'm saying i could certainly copy and paste but that's 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 such a work buzz right a buzz cue but um i'm leaving this track a little bit wide open for the artists to sing on top of i don't want to do too much on my live streams i be doing a lot of stuff on my live streams i ain't gonna lie but this one right here i will be submitting this to one of my artists and i will entrust that person to lit this joint up with their creative vocal arrangement and all that you know good stuff and then more than likely i will get the track back from that person and then i'll do other stuff underneath it or around it to like just kind of like bring the song full circle because they might be doing things like oh snap let me do this to make it sweet follow what they're doing or something like that or i may need to take something out because it's clashing you know what i'm saying like those different things that kind of happens you know back and forth communication you know workflow so the song is about maybe mm, a little bit beyond two minutes and I can see down here at the timeline, yeah, about 2.15-ish, something, 2.16, can't really make out what that time is, yeah, about 2.16, so that's the concept here and i could add transitions in here that makes this more cohesive or like gel better um this song yeah maybe it needs it let me see maybe it does maybe it don't i don't know it looks like we had 13% CPU. That's something I also watch for. Looks like Ableton automatically crossfade these joints. That's what it looks like. Yeah, there's already a. Or if, yeah, there's already crossfades here. That's kind of cool. I appreciate that. Welcome, a welcome feature. I could search for something in here and something that I actually like will pop up maybe I like that do 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 okay let's bring it here and you know what okay Should have worked that time. All 
right, so obviously we're going to turn down the volume a little bit. And maybe put... Send this to reverb if we can do that. Can you do that from here? Is it reverb? Yeah, that is reverb. Cool. Yeah. This is coming along. I guess. saver because I don't have to go in and physically do that I don't know if studio one is doing that yet we have to physically but it's not hard though like I can always go to the front and the back of it to grab the handles and make adjustments you know in bitwig same deal I think bitwig does it automatically too but I think it only does it in the front or the back like it does only just one end something like that but it does something automatically and just like studio one you can grab the other end and make adjustments like you don't even have to put in the command now i know that in here you have to actually put in command to get the fade to work um like pro tools <laughs> you got to select the area and then put a fade there that to me that is interesting like I thought I left the Pro Tools life, but basically you select anything and it's option command F and it brings the fade to wherever and then you have the option to move this, you know, change the curve and whatnot. You know, I wonder if it does this to MIDI. I would suspect not, but I'm just being different. No, it doesn't do it. <laughs> you know, that would have been, that would have been interesting, actually. And then for crossfades, it's the same deal, same command. It takes your crossfade and does that, and you could change it like that. Yeah. I created my own command in Studio One to, to do these type of things. 
but Ableton, there's a dedicated, you got to learn it. So it's again, option command F. So yeah, there you have it. Learn something. I ain't gonna lie. I Googled the crap out of that one. <laughs> I Googled that one, bruh. Because I didn't know. Okay, so if we're coming out of We're working on the crash placements. That's cool. I don't think I need to crash right there in the opening. So I'm gonna hit save. Just bloating. What's going on? The sun is hitting my face. Y'all forgive the exposure. Wait a second. I'm so focused on the sun coming in. I'm also a big fan of, okay, let's rephrase that. I'm a huge fan of arranging tracks and the ease of it, which Studio One has down pack. I love, I love that. Now, we got markers in here. I don't really care for markers. Markers are great, by the way. I use markers for different situations, but for song arranging, I just, uh, you know, eh. I, you know, I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I like it, but, I could do one or two things. I can create an instrument track or a or a uh, audio track, which I'm trying to remember how to do. Obviously, I forgot. So let's consolidate it. And this is going to be intro. We're going to label that as intro. This is intro one. intro this one is going to be verse and I'm just tapping over that was the hook and this is probably the verse again I think that's right. Yeah. So this is like a workflow of a Studio One person trying to recreate the, like the workflow of Studio One in Ableton. Like, 
like really do but yeah this is this is my workflow i like i don't do it often but this is what helps me identify where i am and i could definitely drag some marker you know what it'd be cool if i could just drag this up to the marker lane i think that's something you can do in studio one or create a range windows based off of off the marker but yeah i mean i guess i mean i, I guess i could do this you know i can do i could totally and it, it's probably a good idea to do this anyway because what the markers is doing is creating a, a line through the entire session that you kind of give me that indication that I am at a a shift of the song. So it's this line. So even when I'm down here, I can still see, like, identify that, okay, this means I'm finna go to the next thing. And if I, I guess if I go ahead and label the markers, so it's like twice the work, so to speak. I'm not going to do that because I already kind of have the layout and I'll just be on this video doing like a bunch of things that's boring to people. I already bored you guys so far. So, yeah. This will be cool if Ableton can come around to something like this, you know, where, okay, these, these markers are cool, but it, how do you select a whole? Well, maybe you can't do that. Select to next locator. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's what that just did. So, with that being said, this is my workflow. Ableton 12. Big week. It's kind of all the same to me. Just like how Big week handles the plugins better. But. 12 got some heat in here and you guys let me know what y'all think of the track the workflow whatever b culture lifestyle governed by art